And that's rolling one focus. We're looking good. Looking great. Episode 59 of Something From Everyone. I'm here with Nathan Calcagno. Am I saying the last name right? Oh, you said it perfectly. Yeah. Let's go, dude. That's my favorite game is to embarrass myself saying names wrong. So when I say them right, it's almost disappointing to me. I'm like, <laughs> People my whole life have got it wrong every time. Okay, what's so, the most common mis- yeah, mispronunciation? I got Cali Guiano. I got Calcagni. I got Calgano. My yep. eighth grade science teacher <laughs> there we go. said it in a crazy way. Okay. And I tell this story to people, but I don't say what he said. <laughs> it was that bad of a word that he misplaced. Well, you it. can replace the second C in my name <laughs> okay. with an F. And that's what he said <laughs> nice. in front of the whole class on the first day. Nice. It's like Nathan Calf. Nice. Yeah, like that. That's great. Wait, was he laughing? Was he making fun of you? Or was it no. like a genuine error? No, it was a genuine error. Okay, that's a little and bit better. I, than and me. when he did it, like my soul left my body. This is like the first day of eighth grade. Yep. The teacher calls me the F word. And I'm like, there's no way. But it's over. The dream is dead. I can't <laughs> be crazy. here anymore. You can't go back but, from that day one. But no one laughed. Okay. Like, and I, like, the story is just like, it's such like an easy, like, almost joke to tell. Sure. But like, like, what anchors it to the truth is like, when I tell it, like, no one laughed. Like, it was just me. And I was like, <laughs> and then no one even cared. No one even noticed. That's but, the most perfect example of yeah. that like, high school angst of like thinking that everyone's going to give a fuck and that your life was yeah. ruined. And it's like, yeah. if you had never mentioned that, you probably could have just been like, no, he didn't say that. And just yeah. like gaslit one of your friends into thinking they misheard something. But I, I like but, remembering that my teacher said the F word. Yeah. Like that was real. It happened. And I remember it. I remember <laughs> it vividly. It was Mr. Preston. I was just about to tall. ask. I was gonna, yeah. You probably remember his name. Yeah. You probably hated him the rest of the year, too. No, he was sick. Okay. He was dope. That he was gave the only us, sin? He gave the class a test, and he said, follow the instructions. It was like the second day. Okay. And at the top of the test, it said, don't answer a single question or you fail. And I looked at it and was like, oh, sick. And everyone else did it. And I was just sitting there like an idiot not doing it, but I, I did it right. And he was like, everyone failed. Like, two people did it right. What subject was this again? It was science. Was science class. Yeah. <laughs> was that his own science experiment on it you guys? It was just like, a guy. I don't know. He was just I going like, on. He was freeballing it. He was freestyling. I feel like he was like a PhD student. He was like doing experiments on you guys. And that was like his Yeah, his I think he, he mentioned like he did something like at colleges. Like I don't know if he was a professor. Like he like he he ended up in middle school. You know, I <laughs> Got don't know demoted all the way that. down. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no stress at all. Make all the noise you want. Have fun. <laughs> this is a chill zone. Well, I'm more excited to talk about what you're doing. So Sick. thank you for making the drive out here, Dad. I appreciate you making Absolutely. the trip down and making the time to come on. I know everyone's got plenty of stuff going on. I have nothing going on. <laughs> okay, well, go with me for a second here. Um, quickly before we dive into all the conversational stuff, uh, yeah, for I like to do plugs up top, just let people know what's happening, the important stuff. For me, I am booking music videos, so let me know if you're interested in music videos for the summer. For you, I know you've got a tour coming up and an album coming up, a headlining tour coming up. Yes, mm-hmm. what is when is the album coming out? What is it called? Uh, and where can people get tickets for the headlining run coming up? Uh, my band Boundaries has a record called Death is Little More coming out March 29th. Do I look at this? Whatever you want to do. do. Have fun. I point at Please, yeah. No, WWE I don't. style. I won't do it. Call I won't them out. Do that. Nah, do it. Buy my record. fucking record. There um, we go. Hell yes. Uh, comes out on Three Dot Recordings. Hell yes. March 29th. Death is a little more boundaries. You can buy tickets to our first ever headlining tour with my fucking best friends, Orthodox, Kionashi, and No Cure. Uh, all of May and June. Uh, you can get tickets on our website. You can Google Boundaries Band because if you Google Boundaries, you will get a <laughs> hundred videos of influencers going how to set boundaries Yo. properly in a relationship. Um, <laughs> that's how you. That's and that's my band. My band's name is Boundaries Band. Hell yes. We also have a Crush Plus Plus record out now that is streaming everywhere and also rules. And we will get to that later in the show. But I want to start with the boundary stuff. To me, yeah. that's the topical stuff that is the currently unfolding stuff. Yes. Uh, I know. I think our next run out is a UK or EU yes. UK run with yeah. Spite. Spite, Body Snatcher, and Motherfucking Mouth for War. That is going to be All unbelievable, dude. Both tours I'm doing. The, the UK, Europe, and full US are all my friends. That's a very unique experience. Yeah. I mean, that's not what most of your tours would have been like. You have been to Europe before on a run, correct? Yeah. What are you looking forward to most about going back? So I assume, yeah, you got all snacks. the homies here. The snacks? Snacks. 
what snacks are, and fast food. Specify what are the snacks of the UK that bring you going back? Uh, ha- the I believe the Haribo, like the gummy bear, like the gummies. Okay. The factory is in Europe. Okay, so those shits are fresh as fuck. They're Hell delicious. Yes. Snacks and candy in Europe are crazy. They got they got flavors we don't got here. Give me one. What? Sell me on like something. Everything like the standard flavor there is almost like paprika. What the fuck? Yeah, they don't have barbecue. They have like paprika. Like every oh, every chip I was is paprika. gummies still. No, look, yeah, paprika gummies. I mean, gummies are crazy too. Like a lot of things are like cherry and like like cherry cola, like cola yeah. flavored. I don't. They're just like so much fresher, so much qual- more quality. And also, a big thing in Europe. Like I tell this to fucking everybody. Please, it's just conversations I I have. All of the preservatives and crazy like uh, bypass products we have here in the states are completely illegal in the European yep. Union and the UK. High fructose corn syrup, all the preservatives, like the the boxy hydrocosabine, mm-hmm. bolzazone, yep, those yep, are yep. all crazy fucking illegal. Yep. So you can eat like mega shit the whole time you're there. I get tummy aches crazy easy. Everything I eat, no matter what I eat, tummy ache. Yep. No tummy aches in Europe. I yeah. got one tummy ache one time And it's Europe. like notable. <laughs> yeah, I remember it yeah. vividly because I got left at the bathroom. I got left there. The bus left. Uh, our driver Shout out. driver was not not a nice man. Okay. He hated everyone on the bus. And this was like one of those five tour, like five bands on the bus kind of things. It was it was boundaries, invent animate, spite, and uh, cabal Hell yes. all on one bus. Okay. And our driver mega fucking hated us, and he left me at a gas station in Austria. <laughs> while I had mega old, the only tummy ache I had. Okay. I don't know why I had it, but you can eat like shit in Europe and it's chill. How did you get rescued from this, from uh, this predicament? After the burials merch guy was still awake and he was on the other bus. He was on like the headliner mm-hmm. bus. He went, he was the only person on the whole tour awake. Cause it was like 4am. Yep. He was the only person still awake. Um, Mickey, the driver, was not answering. Uh, so Josh told their driver to tell Mickey that I was smoked, that I was just like an hour behind. Because he just left. He knew I was in the bathroom. He just he just didn't care. And right. then he, he was like, I'm mad at you. And I'm like, you left me. You knew I was in the bathroom. Do a head count, brother. This is your only job. Yeah, no, that guy sucked. That guy was a piece of shit. Not my friend. Where does he rank in like the hierarchy of tour bus drivers? Like, is that your only I'm, bad experience? I'm or they're all kind of pieces. I'm of pretty work? sure in Europe, there's like five people that drive. Really? Yeah. Like, I don't think there's a lot. I don't think there's like a network. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I think it's like five people. And I've heard that he's no longer the driver. I don't know if like Corey or my band is going to be mad at me <laughs> talking about this, but I don't. I don't fucking. Care. We're using a fake name for this yeah. guy. It's not even the no, real it's guy. We're Mickey. About. It's his no, real no, name. No, I'll, no, tell, I'll tell you his address too. <laughs> uh, fucking that guy sucked. He was mean. He said racist things to Alex from Spite, too. Gotcha. That guy was not sick. Yeah. So fuck that guy forever. I don't care about, about blowing up his spot. <laughs> okay. Um, but like... If the rest of the band cares, it's a fake name, by the way. But Suicide Silence. They okay. had a driver. Yeah. His dri- Their driver was awesome. <laughs> he was like this big jolly guy. He's like, you guys want to stop at McDonald's for burgers? Like every day he was like that. And we'd be like, Mickey, can we get can we get gummy worms? He was like, fuck you, fuck <laughs> you, fuck you, fuck you. That guy, oh man, mean guy. Mean, not nice guy. And Vatican had just went right before we did. Okay. We went to Europe. Because that first Europe run was Never Say Die with Suicide Silence. And they went right before, like a month before, with Straight From The Path. And they had this driver that, like, they could not, like, they talked about him every day. He was, like, an action figure. He was, like, their favorite person <laughs> they've ever met. And I was like, I can't wait to go to Europe. And then we get this, we get, like, the most Scrooge piece of shit guy who chain-smoked. He chain-smoked the whole time. I've never thought about how much a bus driver would impact the, like, the mood of a he tour. and like single-handedly, yeah. like, ruined my band's time. <laughs> Because we didn't sleep because it was chain smoking the whole time. We're Probably all st- inside, yeah. Yeah, no, in the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all straight edge, so like like sleeping. Through- Listen, I'm not straight edge, and I still wouldn't be able to sleep no. through like a hot box cigarette. No, yeah, it no, I'm, I'm good on that. But yeah. no, the tour was beautiful. It was amazing. All, every band was super kind to us. Day one, Suicide Silence and After the Burial were so nice, so like loving, so like giving us everything. Currents, too. Yep. Immediately. Like, that was my first time meeting anyone in Currents. I know like Corey grew up with all of them because he's, he's from here, mm-hmm. but... It was my first time meeting Currents, and they were all—they were all like like everybody was super loving. 
I love everyone on that tour. They're all awesome, except for Mickey. <laughs> Mickey can get blown up by dynamite. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Real quick, this is for my friends. This is for my boys. Just got to... Ooh, I like that. I'm not really an ASMR guy, but that one kind of got me. That one had a little turn in my just, brain that I liked. Me and my idiot friends, all we do is drink Polar. That's the one? And we just open it in our microphones. So I just had to <laughs> the do The Discord that. life? Yeah. The, yeah, Discord. That's all we do. The yeah. Discord life. Hell yeah. It's just Matt and Corey, that's all we do. And we... <laughs> Like Jonah from Mouth for War, Trevor from Castaway, Hunter, who I believe is running with Thus Spoke, Zarathustra, like all, all my friends. We're just, that's all we do is open polars all day. <laughs> we don't talk about anything. We just go. <laughs> um, Inside jokes go way harder than conversation sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, what else stands out at Europe as you, you reflect on it? And I guess what makes you excited to go back then? So the, the snacks, I think, are, are one piece of this. You mentioned the fast food is also noteworthy. Oh, yeah. There's no preservatives. None of the shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you eat McDonald's here, yep. you die. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. eat fast food. I know I'm fat, but I don't eat it. I know it's hard to believe, but I don't eat it. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I take, like, sometimes we're on the road and there's, like, there's nothing. Yeah. Like, I eat this, I eat this Arby's or I die because there's just nothing else to eat. And I eat Arby's and I feel horrible. And I have tummy ache and it, the world is ending. It's the worst thing ever. Um, but in Europe, like, they just don't have any of that shit. Like, Europe, it's like cow cow dead burger grill eat it you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's there's no like you pump it full of like like sodium Shit. or or yeah growth hormones or any of that like like bought uh bio biologically engineered chickens without feathers like none of that's legal you know what i mean it's just like yep. this was an animal and then now it's food there is something with subway 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 is the biggest fast food chain in the world which is like my favorite fun fact because it seems so like what are you talking about like they have the most number of restaurants in the world the How? subway who where uh, i don't know but that is, <laughs> as of whenever i googled this one the last six okay. months recently like that is the the thing and they had a big issue in the uk because their bread was ruled cake by like the, the because the of the FDA. amount of sugar in it yeah because the amount of sugar in it and i think that, i don't know if they ch i assume they changed I don't know if they changed the law or the bread, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're powerful enough, That's but they might have funny. changed the law. Like, the there's bread. a guy who <laughs> was like, like, he was like, this is, this is legally cake. Yeah. This, is, this is not past inspection. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Yes. That guy's job is sick. <laughs> the best job Going around being like, That's cake. Yeah. That's cake. And not even like cutting the cake, like to get to physically yeah. taste it and be like, Where's yeah. the lie? Where's the lie? That's cake. Here? It's a fire, a fire. All light. I've done is talk about food and hating a guy. I've not I mean, talked about anything involving anything. What else is there to cover? <laughs> no, fast food is sick in Europe. It's all sick. Like, we went to the Netherlands. We got KFC. Like, I couldn't, like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> like, I can't, I, like, we're going back. It's all we talk about. It's our favorite, like, That's my band's one. favorite thing, because, you know, we don't party at yeah. all. We just sit in a bus. We eat food. You drink coffee, we, guys, though, right? Uh, I I don't drink any coffee. Okay. I, the only That's coffee shocking. I drink is when Corey has, like, his crazy diesel. They get, like, uh, Americanos. They get iced Americanos, like, four, eight shots of espresso. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm always like, give me a sip, because I just, I'm just, I always ask for a sip or a bite <laughs> of everything. And he gives me a sip. <laughs> Let me know when you want one. And I'm like, and I, I sip it, and I'm like. Because it's like I'm not, I don't Coffee's like the it. worst thing in the world. You don't I, like it either. It's the most disgusting beverage. I I, I wish I could drink it. My life would be better. I think half the people that are watching this are gonna blow themselves up. If that's <laughs> honestly, I would stand by that. Everyone I, I know likes coffee. Like yeah. everyone else is a coffee guy. Like yeah. like Matt, big. He worked in a in a like cafe for a while. Uh, Corey like can't function without coffee. He goes he goes to Purgatory every day in uh, Middletown, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I've accepted that I'm wrong here, but like, yeah, coffee's the worst thing ever created. Yeah. Maybe not ever. I think there's probably a couple things on that. <laughs> worst things ever created. Not list, like, 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 so our producer, Randy, has this, this crazy, like, I'm sorry. He has this crazy, like, contraption for making, like, a cold brew drip. Mm. And it's, like, the smoothest, least bitter, insane thing. I love drinking it. Because mm -hmm. he, like, what, he likes to make, like, like, these coffee drinks he gets crazy imported coffee randy labeouf randy's the man don't you forget it shout out and shout out eq i believe is the <laughs> shout out baby girl <laughs> there we go he just, he just yeah eq is brilliant she's perfect i love her she oinks <laughs> i haven't met her does. but i've heard great things about i hope her. you meet her i, hope be, you, I would yeah. love if you came with us the next time we go and i'd love just to, to see work. that cabin yeah. i've heard yeah i've heard cool things about the cabin his whole, oh, cabin his whole setup down there yeah. it's amazing yeah. everything everything surrounding randy Every thought and memory I have is like it's bliss. It's Hell perfect. Yes. I, like I went. That's we did, such a val sorry. I'm interrupting you, but no. I, I am start. I'm 
for you to describe recording with someone that way is such an incredible testament to how good they are and also such an incredible way to make good music. Yeah. But one thing with music videos I'm always trying to like get to the bottom of is like no one's really comfortable on set. Like set is a, a kind of an uncomfortable place by nature, right? Like there's no, cameras that people sucks. don't like. There's lights that are <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable. Like uh, I think Eric's another great example. Eric East today, shout out. I know Genius. just crush your videos. Like he is Genius. one of my favorites to consume people, uh, to consume art from. Uh, and to describe Randy's way that everything you have with him is bliss to me is like, that's where you get the good ideas from, right? Like part of the challenge of Randy is not just being good at the computer, but in having a space that you go to and feel that bliss. And that's a really, yeah, as I think about my own music videos, my own sets, it's like, yeah, how do I build that? How do I build mm -hmm. this, this bliss that people come to and like they overlook the stress of like, Recording a record is stressful, right? Putting out a record is stressful. And for boundaries, like, you're starting to gain momentum. So I assume there's some new stresses with this record that maybe doesn't exist when only Connecticut is listening to the record, right? Mm -hmm. And to have that gift to be able to create something that all you remember about it is bliss, I think is unbelievably powerful. And, yeah, something I, I hope I can emulate in my own work. That's how point. I feel about everyone in my band. Yeah. Everyone surrounding my band. Yeah. Like, all of our people working with us, all of our friends. Like, I, it's just bliss. This environment we have for ourselves is like, like, like we don't tolerate and we don't allow people in it that are like otherwise would like ruin it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of our friends, uh, Randy, Eric, uh, our team, our management, Wayne, Dave, everyone, they're all, they're all perfect. They're all brilliant. They're perfect for us. What you a know? rare recipe that is too, right? And, I... and everyone in, in Boundaries, we're all, we're all best friends. We all mm -hmm. like... Little rendezvous here in Meriden. Perfect, brilliant pizza place. One of the best pizzas I've ever had in my life. As soon as this ends, uh, Cody is driving two and a half hours, or maybe not that long, from Worcester to Meriden just for pizza. About an hour and a half, too. Like, yeah, he's, like, he's just coming to get pizza with me and Corey. I think Matt's getting pizza, too. That rules. Uh, I don't, like, we're all, they're all my best friends. I love them. I that love them rules. all more than anything. Same with Crush. We've all been friends for years. I love them more than anything. I love Randy. I love EQ. I love, like, I just... I, I don't do anything with my life. I sit at home. I hang out with my girlfriend. I don't. I don't do anything. Uh, That's a very wild understatement. <laughs> but I'll let you get away with it for um, the moment. <laughs> uh, I just. I only have good people in my life, and I'm yeah. very grateful for it. That's it's a, very cool. A rare poet, short of bus drivers, short of some of the other people. And I'm sure he's been a manager or someone. I will never see that guy again. A, a venue manager somewhere. Maybe that yeah. pissed you off. But like, yeah, it's incredible to be surrounded by people that work well. And that's probably part of where the boundary success has come from, right? Like if, if there was a, a squeaky wheel in the vehicle and mm -hmm. this thing is not moving as smooth as it is now, it's not growing as well as it is now. Mm -hmm. Um I want to go back to the start of this thing. We've talked yeah. Yeah, talked about how all our, our friendships that we've made to this point. Yeah. Dude, take me back to day one. Like, I, I know you're playing bass now in both yeah. Boundaries and Crush Plus. Yeah. Crush Plus Plus. Okay. I believe before this was Regime and you were yeah. a vocalist in Regime. Yeah. Is there anything before Regime? Like, where are you okay. at eight years old? Are you okay. starting to play bass, starting to play guitar? Like, um, yeah, take me to day one of your I musical sort of, journey. I think I've talked to a few friends about this. I sort of felt like my brain didn't come online, if it even is online right now. <laughs> it, I don't feel like it came online until I was like 14 years old. Cause I can remember like being eight and everything, but all I cared about was like uh, Transformers, Dragon Ball, Rip, <laughs> Rip my goat, Akira yes. Toriyama, he passed away. Yes. We got the news yesterday. I don't know when this is coming out, but N later today, this week. Yeah. No yesterday, yeah, a couple days from now. Last night, got the news. I wanted to wear Dragon Ball stuff, but I just felt like that would be too. You know, uh, but nose, yeah. going from that, like all I cared about was Dragon Ball, Transformers. Uh, I didn't even care about music. Like I listened to Green Day and Linkin Park and like whatever butt rock was on the radio. Um, but I didn't like I just wasn't I didn't have a care. I didn't yeah. like I, I just went to school and was on like NPC sim walk through life mode. Just I think a lot of little kids are like that, but I just didn't have any sort of. I didn't play sports. Mm -hmm. My mom tried to make me play sports, and I just tried to get through it so I can go home and play with <laughs> fucking Transformers and play video games. I'll, like, I'll, Do you have any great sports memories of picking dandelions in the field or something? I tripped trying to get a ball and got a rock stuck in my shoulder. Yeah. I still have a crazy scar from it. That rules. The, the rock just got lodged in my shoulder, and I needed, I needed to go to the hospital. I can see why sports didn't stick for you. Yeah. No, <laughs> I just sucked at them too. I'm just like a fat moron. I'm just not built for sports. Oh like, yes. I don't know. Like if it's not, if it should be obvious looking at me, but just sports, just I don't, I don't care about them. They're just not my thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, like not even 
like being bad at them, but also watching because people can be bad at them but still love them. Sure. But I watch sports and I'm like, oh, blah, 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 I don't care. Things happening. Yeah. My mo the biggest interest I've had in sports was when me, Matt, and Corey all got on DraftKings to try to start making money mm -hmm. at sports betting. That's the most I ever cared about Dude, sports. It's <laughs> crazy how how addictive gambling is, I guess is the, the honest thing there. Cause you're not saying you got addicted to gambling, but yeah, it, it's that, that rush that comes with well, it. Boundaries loves gambling in, uh, in college, my friends, my roommates, I'm kind of similar to you where like, yeah. I, I grew up an athlete, so that's dissimilar, but like, I've never had a favorite football team. I've never lost sleep over someone winning or losing a game. Mm -hmm. I've never felt good because my team won. Like, that's just not, I like sports. I'm happy to watch them, but I don't give a flying fuck about what happens. Mm -hmm. My roommates were all like dead set, like, like hell bent. They had their favorite teams. And so what I started doing when like Sunday morning, we'd all wake up and watch the games together. I would gamble like $3 total over the course of a morning, like a quarter on this game, 50 cents on this game, like 25 just crazy cents. parlay it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. so much fun. It's like, dude, I would win a dollar, and it's like, yes, dude, I won. And it, was, <laughs> it was shocking to me of like, oh, this is three dollars, right? Like, I I can quickly see how this snowballs into like yeah. much bigger bets, and yeah, a much yeah. Like, I didn't. I remember when I started, I was like, oh, this one has good odds, that one has bad odds. Like, if mm -hmm. I just even though I do safe bets, I'll make money. Yep. But then I like with parlaying and all that, like I understood yeah. how people like ruin their lives. Oh yeah. How they how they like throw a thousand dollars at an insane parlay that mm -hmm. would never work, but if it did hit. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yes. Unbe like it, infinite money. Yeah. Um infinite money glitch. <laughs> my friend uh Adam, who was in regime and the previous bands okay. before that with me, I got dinner with him two nights ago. He he praised, he did a crazy parlay while we were out to dinner and he hit it. So that that it happens. Yeah. That's yeah. But getting back to all that, um Offline, brain mentally AFK. Yes. Until like the summer before I started high school, I watched the Slipknot Live at Download mm -hmm. DVD. Because I watched like the Wait and Bleed music video. And my mom told like my my parents, my mom, and everyone I grew up around were big in Boston hardcore. Like real Boston hardcore. I was not and I am not. I'm just stupid metalcore baby. But um, she would bring me to shows when any of her friends were playing. We're talking like house shows? We're talking like real Anything, shows? Anything, real like, shows. Like okay. She would bring me to Madball, Death Before Dishonor. But I'd be like two. Okay. I, like, I, I don't have any memories of it. Mm -hmm. uh, she took me to see like Sick of It All's 20-year anniversary when I was like 10. She took me to see Wisdom and Chains in Brockton. Um Went like a, a few weeks after that, I just didn't get it. Like I was eleven, I didn't mm -hmm. care. Um, she bought a Slipknot, like the self-titled CD, when I was a baby, because I would like sing along, go, rah, 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 along to Wait and Bleed. But I, it didn't come back to me until like before high school when I listened to Wait and Bleed when I watched the Slipknot DVD. And my mom was like, you know, I have all these CDs and tapes, like System of a Down of Deftones, because they would play on the radio and you'd sing along to them and then you just stopped doing it one day. And I went back and I like remembered all these songs from when I was like four fucking years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I can't believe like this has been here the whole time and I just didn't, I didn't remember. It was just room in my brain yeah. got dusty. And also like I knew I these the songs, yeah. but I didn't know I knew them. Um, and after that, that was it. After starting high school like all i could think about was was being in a band was playing with people like like i would be in class not paying attention wanting to go home wanting to play guitar wanting to just anything just fantasize about playing in front of people that's all i did like an insane scenarios like i think about it to this day like pulling the fire alarm it doesn't make any sense but like pulling the fire alarm going outside and there's a show waiting for me to perform. Like, it's so stupid, but that's where my brain was. It's where my brain's always been. Mm -hmm. It's like, I have i don't think I, it's possible for me to do anything else. I got a scholarship leaving high school uh, to pay for tuition for college. And I started college and I was there for a month. Like, it's just, it's not, like, I mm -hmm. just can't. It's just not for me. Yep. And nothing is for me. Not even, like, having a normal job's not for me. Like this music thing is the only thing that makes any sense, and I try to try to throw myself at it. And when I'm tired, in the even in the middle of a set, like I like I'm like, there's nothing in the tank. This this I am I am fat. This is hard. Like I remember that like this is all you do. Like you don't have anything else. So if you suck at this, 
And if you're tired, like you, you have nothing. Yeah. You have to be above and beyond. So it's interesting that that's like actively in your memory. And the analogy that I, guess, I have a crazy fucking memory, <laughs> like full, like straight up crazy memory. Uh, we just talked about sports or how you're not in yeah. sports. I guess this analogy won't work perfectly, but there's a wide receiver. I think it was Jerry Rice who was talking about this. And there's a thing in football called the slot receiver. And basically his job is to run like, like a five yard route. And he's you said run. You, you didn't know anything about sports. I know a lot of, I don't love them. Like okay. I, I don't, whatever. Irrelevant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a le- yeah. The point of the story here is you have to do something very scary as a football player. Like, you know, you're going to get hit and you know, okay. it's going to suck, but like, all right. You got to do it anyway. Okay. And he was like, when I would stand in the line of scrimmage, knowing I was going to get hit, my life was going to suck. He would have a moment of like, whatever I was running from had to be scarier than what I was running into. Yeah. So this nine yeah, foot absolutely. tall giant who was going to kill me in a minute. Yeah. I had to make sure that my life in the past was scarier or my life would be right now if I wasn't here was scarier. Yeah. And it always struck me as like, a, oh yeah, that's what makes people be great is like this fear of like, I can't go back. Like there, this is the only thing that can work for me right now. Absolutely. And it's a similar thing to what you're describing of like, yeah, the stage is the only place. There is no other place. And it's, I think people sometimes have that be true for them mm-hmm. but to have you like actually actively acknowledge it i think is a really fascinating layer there of like yeah this is the only place there is no job that's going to work for me there is no, no if, schooling if that was going to work like, this is it if i fuck this up that's it yeah like i will i will have to i'll be a 711 manager i'll play video games I'll, me and my girlfriend will watch anime like that's like that will be my life and mm-hmm. It is what it is, but like that's like, fulfilling for some people. But yeah, for like the way you're I wired, can't. Yeah. I can't fuck this up. Yeah, like I can't. I have to. I have to do it completely and and like like an animal. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to be a part of me. Otherwise, it won't work. You know, and that's a big mistake I think people make when they do this whole thing. Is uh, I've had the privilege of being able to do this because a lot of people don't even get the chance to mm-hmm. throw themselves at things. Yep. Uh given their circumstances, their life, their privileges, you know? Uh, And I've had the ability through one way or another to just be able to do this, to have this like lifestyle be maintained for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the biggest thing for anyone who's ever going to see success, and I'm not successful. I am in like the middle of one day, maybe being successful. (laughs) Like we are still in the grind, but I don't think you even get a seat at the table unless you throw yourself at something completely, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, this is maybe terrible advice, but if I had to give advice to anyone who, like, wants to play shows across the country, who wants to play music with their friends, who wants to see the world, who wants to experience all this, like, you can't have a plan B. Mm -hmm. Like, plan B is, is the death of plan A. When Like, I have so many friends, and, like, they're... They're all more financially stable. They're all smarter than me. They're more responsible than me. They're more grown up than me. They're more put together than me. They have houses. They have significant others. They have everything. Um, They always had like, I'm going to do music, but I'm going to go to college and like have a plan B or like, I can't practice. I have, I have to do this or like, I can't play the show. I have to do this. Like, like it's always been my number one priority. And with this group of people I'm with, with boundaries and with crush, like it's the same thing. Yep. Like uprooting our lives, like this comes first. And people fail for that reason. People fail. You mentioned earlier, like uh, the the squeaky gear. Mm-hmm. Like if we all didn't get along like this, it would make it a lot harder. And that's true for a lot of bands. A lot of bands, like it's like I've met bands that do it completely out of like we're the band. We're not friends. We're a band. This it's is a job. It's the craziest thing, and I'm sure you've seen it yeah. more on tours or at festivals. You, yeah. yeah, you become more aware of these things. And yeah, that's always such a weird part of the industry is yeah. how many people are just coworkers. And like, that's fucking insane. It, to Every, live with your coworkers is I've crazy. been, yeah. I've like come into projects, like someone's hit me up and be like, oh, you want to play? You want to do this with us? Mm-hmm. And like not knowing anyone and being like, hey, what's up, guys? And I'm like immediately like, this is stupid. I want to go home. Mm-hmm. Every band I've been in that has toured, has been my friends because uh all right now back to high school i meet my friend adam hell yes i meet him i think my junior or sophomore year he's like uh i play guitar and i was like oh, i do a day to remember covers in my living room and he's like do you want to come over and we can watch a day to remember videos i'm like yeah and have faith in me covers uh, on guitar is yeah. my root too. I think he probably has one of those on his Facebook. Like I just he yep. he was he was awesome. He was awesome at guitar. 
I came over and we'd sit in his basement. Uh, we would like play songs mad loud. His parents hated it. Um, did they let the, did they let you know that they hated it, <laughs> or are you just implying that they hated it? Oh, I know they hated it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but but they're sick. Shout out Adam's parents. Hell yeah. Um, and then we started this horrible fucking band called Revisions. They're just a day to remember covers. It was nice. just a day to remember covers. Our first show was four day to remember covers. And then I think covers are brilliant. I think more bands should play covers. Yeah, That's absolutely. A I agree. Yeah. I think if you're talking about the, you're just talking about the wisdom for bands who want to get on stage is don't yeah. have plan B. I think step one of getting on stage is playing covers. I think yeah. it's like go up there, get your reps in on stage, learn how to set up your gear, learn how to like be comfortable on stage. Like don't even worry about the music. Part. Oh, dude, like, like you have to suck. You yeah. have to suck. Yep. I remember those shows and I remember playing to all the people that were like in like bands that had been doing it for a little while mm -hmm. when I had first started and they would all laugh at me. And I was like, I just started, bro. Yep. Why are you laughing at me? Like people laughed at you. Is that why you're laughing at me? Like, like you're just perpetuating this cycle. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to like something when it sucks. And I think you yep. deserve it to your friends to tell them when something sucks. But to laugh at someone who's clearly 17 years old, because I was playing shows when I was 17. Mm -hmm. Like, you're crazy. You're out of your fucking mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know better. I'm a kid. Yep. Like, don't, but um, you have to suck. Yes. You have to. You, like, if you yep. come out and you're good, when you start and you're good, like, like fuck you. It didn't happen. Also, no. like, I don't I don't believe that exists. I don't think anyone... I, I, there is a band like, who, like, at, like, I remember, like, at 16 sure. years old, they were genius. Okay. I'm not going to mention them, but, like, they were geniuses. Yeah. And they they're st they still are, but um, they're not 16 anymore, obviously. <laughs> uh, so in a Data Room Recover band, yeah, I play a couple songs. That go yeah, great, eventually, don't eventually yeah, it like, unravels. That band goes from playing house shows. My friend, uh, I have these two friends, Brian Huntress and Justin Arena. They are both very active artists right now. I'm going to plug them real quick. Uh, Brian Please. Huntress runs the uh, Boston Art Podcast. He makes music. He makes art. He paints. He sculpts. He does everything. Like right. he's, He does everything. Right. Um, he put out an album, I think, today called like... Uh, like songs for like art songs for kids and teens. He's just trying to make these songs to send the message about making art that like, you don't have to go to school. There's no process. Just do it. You know what I mean? And here's how, here's okay. like how to get you started. And yep. he's, he's, he's a genius. He's a visionary. I haven't seen him or talked to him in a little while, but like, like I started playing music at his house because he, his backyard was a venue we called the barn and yeah. me, him, my friend Justin, we all did these shows together. Uh, Justin runs Together Records, Together Press. They print shirts. They they make music. They they do. They create art. They are dedicated to art. They tour. Hell yeah! Like they're everywhere. Justin Arena, Brian Huntress, please look them up. So you're with the right right people, the right brains. It sounds yeah. like. Yeah, it's having the boundaries. They do. Crew, like, they like, did like that's folk, another great crew. They did folk punk and like folk folky like singer songwriter stuff, and that was never my shit. Like, we were just together in mentality and in, like, love. We were best friends. But we never, ever, uh, like, I, like, I made stupid metalcore. They did that. Uh, we all supported each other, but, like, I just never, I never had the love for that music. Mm -hmm. um, but I was around, like, this, this DIY folk punk setting that we created for ourselves. And, like... Like I still may, I hold that DIY aspect to myself to this day, even with boundaries, even though things are going well, I want, I like, I feel it a duty to myself to maintain this level of, uh, of DIY grittiness. Yeah. That, that yeah. like, like becoming too corporate and becoming too, uh, just too, too mall would be, would be dishonest. Yeah. Um, That's but a weird problem of finding success in a band is like, yeah, with someone like boundaries, it's like your identity, I think is almost in like a what's up Denny's like, that's the boundaries show is like that intimate, like wherever it is mm -hmm. kind of be, let's make noise. It's going to be a great time. The people are going to love it. And yeah, as the, as the crowd goes bigger, as the, the gap between stage and barricade grows bigger, like it's harder and harder to maintain that same 
vibe, and I assume that's also true of like gear, right? Like I'm I'm not the gear, I'm not the cap guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly, but I assume as you get better, it's a lot more tempting to be like, let's get the quad cortex. Oh, we're whatever, we're on quad cortex, which is great. Yeah. But I'm sure there's some part of your brain that's like, I want to make noise through an amp. I don't. Um, I don't know. So, yeah. like Corey, I when I first started with Corey, the first tour I did with Boundaries, Corey was big like tube. Never will not be tube guy. And that's just how we all want to be. Yeah. Tubes rule. Big ass, heavy ass power amps, they rule. But um it's it's not a dying art and it's not a lost art. It's just hard to maintain both like uh like the power transformer blowing, a tube blowing, like the, mm-hmm. the physical maintenance. Yep. Um also like you have a big pedal board with all your effects on it, just a fucking Stupid quarter inch patch cable breaks for no reason. Your your power yeah. on your pedal board breaks for some fucking reason. Yep. A house guy stepped on something. Now none of it works. Sound guy mm-hmm. plugged it into the lighting power and now it's exploded and your one thousand dollar boutique pedals are fried and they won't like it's just not yeah. It's beautiful and it rules, but in the setting of being like a young band trying to make it work, it's just not feasible. The lack of convenience yeah. is overwhelming. Yeah, when you're bigger and you can have you can have texts, you can have people set it up for White you. White gloves yeah. handling it. You can yeah. have people who know what they're doing dealing with it. Like yeah. it's it's a luxury. Mm-hmm. But like right now, like we have our quad cortex, we have Seymour Duncan power stages that power our cabs. So we're still getting cab sound. Like we have our cabs on stage. We've I have this big, beautiful black market custom cab that is loud and powerful as fuck. And we power it, even though we have our quads, we have, we, they, they are powered and they're loud. And they're just, they're becoming the industry standard. Everyone I've met who's like, oh, no, dude, tubes, tube amp forever. Like, they're getting on quad cortex. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it, Neural DSP is just, it's a, it is brilliant. Yeah. We're neural artists, so I'm not just a fuck. I, I am a shill, but, like, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, That's an interesting layer, though, as you're talking about, like, wanting to lose your grit. It's like, well, there's some parts of our grit that we're willing to do away with, but there's some parts of it that are core But, like, like even, like, so, uh, Never Say Die and the tour we did with Lorna Shore, uh, April of 2023, I think that's when it was. I don't even remember. I don't remember. Sounds good to me. Yeah, right? Probably. But, um... (laughs) That was our first experience, like barricade big rooms. You know yeah. what I mean? Like two, three thousand cap mm-hmm. rooms, barricade, like holy fuck. This Seems is not every night. Yeah. And we just like the last tours we did were like with varials, like three, four hundred cap rooms, people one inch away from me, back mm-hmm. flipping on my pedal board, breaking it. That was my last tour with a pedal board, <laughs> I think was varials. Um uh even when we're in those big rooms, we do the same thing. Like we, Europe was a big learning experience to go from how playing 200 rooms to people that really give a fuck to playing big rooms of people who've never heard of you and how to win them over, you know? Cause it was, it's easy. The tour we did with Spite, the tour we did with Varials, like we had, we had the privilege of being in front of people that loved us. You know what I mean? People came and they showed us love. In Europe, no one gives a fuck. No one knows who we are yet. You know, we're there opening Never Say Die. Everyone's like, who, who is this band? Who's this boundaries band playing for us? Uh, mm-hmm. It was a big learning experience on how to win people who don't give a fuck and don't owe you anything over. But we channel that same energy. It, it, it Nothing changes. Like, we don't suddenly stand still because we're on a giant fucking stage. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't think we ever will. Uh, even, like... Like, if we get big, crazy lighting production that does all the heavy lifting for the stage show, mm-hmm. like smoke, strobes, all that, you don't have to move. You can just stand there and the lights will do all the work. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that'll ever be the case. I don't no. think it's possible. No. Because, like, that's not why we do it in the first place. Like, Matt, Matt's entire directive is expression. Mm-hmm. Everything he does is to express himself. He hates talking about himself. I don't think he likes doing interviews. Like, he, he does this all to express himself. I do a lot of the talking on stage because he doesn't want to just because he lives solely to get it out. All of his lyrics, everything he does is to get it out. And I see him as just a a conduit to bounce off to me, to bounce off to everyone else. You know what I mean? Cody, no, you're fine. Sorry. Uh, Cody, energy, Corey, energy, me, energy, Tim, energy. Like, it's all about energy. It's all about feeling it. I think... I think the day the band dies will be the day that we no longer have the heart to try on stage. You know, that will be like if this works for us and we 
see any lasting success. The day we're just like, it's over. Mm-hmm. Even if we keep going, it's over. Yep. But I hope that never happens because that's not why I do this. That's not why I started doing this. Yep. I put you guys in like the knocked loose camp there. Of like, I think knocked loose is a similar oh, dude, band. They like, they are going to continue to get bigger yeah. productions and more opportunities. And like, I don't think there's an amount of fire you could put on stage that'll make them stand still. Like, that band is fucking keep brilliant. doing what they're doing, whether it's yeah. 200 people or 20,000 people. I like, love it, loose. it seems like they are universal there. Um, what was my. Oh, uh, I wanted to circle back on two things there. One, uh, it's a bummer that Matt doesn't love. Yeah, expressing himself because I think when he does, he's a brilliant and insightful person. And I, I look back, we did that like documentary thing in 2019 with him, and the mm. interviews with him I think are so brilliant and insightful into like what the boundaries he loves is like talking to people. Yeah, and like, it's the camera part that I think yeah. is, which I understand, I'm empathetic too. But I guess what I'm yeah. uh, saying there is, yeah, and the, I hope he doesn't feel like if he watches this, I'm blowing up his spot. But I just I love him so much, yeah. I adore him so much, both yeah. as my friend and also like a fellow like person doing this like yes. even if i didn't know who he was i've always adored yeah. like the way he carries himself yeah um i cut you off i don't even know why i'm sorry no worries at all yeah so all <laughs> up to matt hopefully he keeps yeah keeps growing out of that yeah. and then the piece two here is in never say die you mentioned having to like win over crowds yeah how do you win over a crowd where i think it's a really interesting problem i agree that like when you're playing to your fans you almost can't go wrong like uh, I assume there's some stress before Boundaries plays the underground, but to some degree, it's like, to me, that show can't fail. Like, literally, the cabs could go out, and people would just sing the words for you and, like, make the show keep out. Like, there's Unless it does fail. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> but over when, when you're opening Never Say Die, like, that can very easily fail. And maybe not fail in the sense of, like, things go to zero, but, like, mm. yeah, it's much less success rate than a Webster Underground show mm. where... Uh, how do you, yeah, win a crowd over? Is there anything like on stage you guys do differently? Is about just almost ignoring their because I think the challenge there is like winning them over, but it's also that you go on stage to a cold crowd, right? Like you're not yeah. coming on stage. Oh yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Already, absolutely. There's like a, a three, I mean, on a three song window of them yeah. being like, "Am I gonna have fun or not?" Yeah. And yeah, is there anything that you do differently? Is there anything as a band that you guys focus on to win a crowd over in that sense? There's a, there, yeah, there's boxes that we check both. Consciously and unconsciously, mm-hmm. just because we've gotten a feel f- after doing this. Um, starting the set, big, yep. big, fast, strong start. Because if you start slow build up, low and slow, it won't work on a new crowd. Mm-hmm. Low and slow will only work on someone who's ready to see you. Bad Omens can do that. They yeah. can have a six-minute intro and yeah. it like builds hype. But Yeah, yeah like, like Slipknot, yeah. like having music playing behind curtains for 14 fucking minutes. <laughs> like... Yep. Like it, it's it's obvious. Like it doesn't even need to be said. If you're an opener, that like you can't do that. Of course. So yeah. like, yeah. loud, strong start. Um, it sounds like a joke, but telling you're up to circle pit works every time. Okay. Like, like Europe loves circle pits. I can't get enough of them. Interesting. Uh, I and this is something I do both here and there. I don't believe like in insulting the crowd. Like at all. I don't think it works. I'm with you. I, I don't think it like I I know there are bands that are like. What's up, fat pussy mm-hmm. motherfucker? Like I don't, yeah. I say crazy shit on stage. Yeah, but it's always uh, in a lifting way. I feel like, like I think you praise the crowd. You get more flies with honey. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You don't, you don't win people over by being mean to them. Even if it's a dead crowd, even if it's people who aren't really into it, like you thank them for giving them your time and their their care to you. Yes, just like because. You know, maybe they're not backflipping, but they're going to go home and they're going to listen to it. And then maybe afterwards will backflip. Dude, but. I was recently at a show where the, I'm obviously not going to say the band's name, but the direct support uh, was this band who came out and was just, yeah, fuck you guys. You guys all suck. You're not even moving or you're having fun. And it's like, oh, dude, I've, it never works. I've, I've heard bands do it, right? Like it's not an uncommon tactic to, mm. we need more energy. You guys aren't moving enough, whatever, some version of that. But this went to a point where I, I will like, never say that in my life. Uh, Good. I will never say that. <laughs> uh, like you guys are like, okay, but let's do it. Let's. I need good. a ninety-seven. No, because what you're really saying is we're not doing good enough to make you. Move, yeah. Right. Like it's not a them problem. It's yeah. a you problem. And this artist did it to such a degree where I was like, yo, this is almost like almost feels personal. Of like, who hurt you today? Yeah. And it was such a strange like new degree of like negging of like yeah. you guys all suck this is the worst crowd of the night prove that you're not the worst crowd we've ever had kind of shit it never works and it's yeah it's direct support it's like if i'm the headliner and what i know is that the headliner is friends with them these are all nice people and it's just kind of a gimmick that they were on for that tour yeah but it was one of those like no 
Like these people gave money and time and energy. Like they got a babysitter to come see you. Like whatever they sacrificed to be here. Like they are here to see you. Don't be that yeah. guy. Like no, it I just, hate it. I it seems it. so short sighted and narcissistic. And like I'm not giving that guy more of my money. Like that's yeah. not who I'm buying a shirt from. That's not who I'm like, going to buy. Sometimes, from. like there was a time where it was kind of sick. Yeah. Like, like I would say like 20 when bands did call outs in their songs sure and they were like what's up yeah it's piss drinker 2025 <laughs> like when bands did that that's yeah. such a dated terrible outdated thing but when bands did that and they talk shit to the crowd like like it was sick yep. you know what i mean but like right now music is not that you yep. know uh the, the 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 atmosphere like the air in the room it's all it's not that anymore hmm. and i think like you just if the the show sucks like so like it's not on anyone right it's just sometimes the show just sucks it's not on them it's not on you yeah. like everyone can do better and next time you'll do better but like i will never like i can't believe people get on stage and like sorry if you're watching this and you do that like don't mean to diss you but like don't fucking do that i do <laughs> yeah like don't do that don't be like you guys are the worst crowd i've ever seen like who, yeah. what the fuck is your deal bro yeah if, if you act like you're having a great time even if you're not mm -hmm. right if you're like in your head, like, oh man, this is not what I thought. I thought it would be way sicker. But you keep trying and you keep putting out yep. this air of 10 out of 10. Like, people are going to pick up on it. Yep. You know? We like, always talk about build it and they will come. And it's, yeah. it's like, it's true in the live show as well. It's like, yeah. build a good energy on stage. I think this is where I'll yeah. use knock to loose because I don't want to keep gassing you up because I think boundaries is a great. But if I <laughs> depersonalize it, then it's easy to <laughs> talk about knock to loose. But with them, it's like, yeah, there's no question what's going to happen in the crowd because what they're doing on stage. Yeah. Like, they are setting such a high example and having so much fun. I wonder like, if that band plays bad shows. I'm oh. sure they would say they do, and I yeah. probably would disagree with yeah. what they consider a bad show. Yeah. But I'm I'm sure everyone, yeah, that, that slider's always happening. I'm sure they have yeah. a good and bad relative to whatever they're used to. Uh, but, like, yeah, I'm sure they play, and sometimes the crowd feels dead, but it's like that was as energetic as they were going to be. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, right? Like if they if Knock Loose goes out and doesn't do that, then that crowd is way more dead <laughs> than mm -hmm. they, whatever it, the bad is. So it's like, yeah, build a meal, come set that example on stage, and life goes better. And this, yeah. yeah, the idea of doing the alternative is unbelievable to me. Yeah, no, it's crazy. But hell yeah! So we join a bad band, <laughs> play some data member covers. Oh yeah! At some We're point, regime that, yeah. starts to take off. Yeah, so it's the next, next step of this journey. That band revisions just doesn't work because it's mm -hmm. kids in high school. Everyone's yep. got different priorities. Um, time goes on. I go to more local shows. I get acquainted with more local people. I start just being supporting and attending instead of like support my band. You know what I mean? Like I just, I just get into the scene mm -hmm. and I just experience people in bands. Eventually me and Adam write some songs together uh and put them out during the recording process i got sick and the whole time tracking vocals i was sick and then i'm good i was good after regime just starts playing shows all my friends like it it was like the first time i was in a real band because before that was just like vocal uh voice memo demo recordings <laughs> yeah it's the first time we like did a record yeah. put it out made cds toured like was with regime and um, people liked us, like East Coast, and like especially like Massachusetts, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. People are very kind to us. A lot of friends that I will have forever from playing with Regime. People I still see and talk to that like are around and apart because of what I did with Regime today. Um, just during COVID, things change. Just things slow down. Yeah. We never made another record. We we did tons of pre-pro we recorded songs in a studio like we paid to get them done and i just i don't think i don't think they'll ever come out but like we there are other regime songs that exist that we just have on our phones all of us um we just, just things change just yeah. like we're all friends like because tom's in crush with me just saw adam a few nights ago and ryan i still hang out with i talk to him all the time mm -hmm. um we're all still friends it's just covid changed things a little for everyone our, like how our lives all looked um, <clears throat> me and Tom did a band called Robin Wood together, which is the same exact lineup as Crush. It's the same people. We just 
just scrapped the name, scrapped all the previous music, and was like, let's do this new thing, mm -hmm. brand it the way we want, and do a record. I'll get, we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. In 2019, right after recording songs with Regime, uh, Corey messages me. And me and Corey are kind of friends. You read my mind. My next question is, where are yeah. you when you get the boundaries call? Yeah. And you are. <laughs> me and Corey are kind it. of friends because, like, I had seen boundaries. And here's here's a quick fact, all right? Seeing them live, that band was stupendous. Yep. Way before I joined. Yep. 2017, um, like, Regime and Boundaries would just play shows together. That band was has always been stupendous. Always, yep. With or without me, like, band is amazing because Matt and Corey are, are geniuses. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? And uh, my friend Kevin, who used to be the drummer, I still talk yes. to Kevin every day. Been Kevin. He's making cool pixel art. I always yeah, love. He yes, rules. He rules. Yes, yes, yes. He's a, he's a genius. Yes. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Um, the band's the band's always been amazing. But even though they were good live, HCM blows. HCM sucks, and I thought it sucked back then. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's I know. Wait, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that because I think people. Ex are, is there an expectation that you're supposed to like? I don't Your think music? so. No, I don't. It's not my music at all. Yeah. I didn't write it, and it's also old enough. If if that was the record that yeah. had just come out, yeah. or the one that was coming out, then it's a problem. But yeah. I think you say that uh, for what it's worth. I don't usually cut anything, but if yeah, we have to cut anything. No, no, I, I just to. like because um, I but, mean specifically like people like still like HCM, yeah. and like people that come to shows still like HCM. Mm -hmm. So like, does me saying that I hate it like ruin that for people? Sometimes it does, right? Like when your favorite band is like, like oh, I love this record, and your favorite band's like fucking. That shit sucks. We're never playing it. Like that breaks your heart a little, and you like disinterest from the I'd band. Argue it's I guess different. it is what it is. I'd argue it's different for a yeah. vocalist. The other, I think my my two cents of this is like, uh, as long as Matt's bought in or can pretend to be bought in on stage, I think it works. <laughs> oh, you, and, dude, I love playing Rain of Pain live. Yeah, I will never not love it. That song is amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, that song is amazing. I I like um, Season the Demon. Yep. That track rules. But like Sour Mouth, like we all agree that is the worst shit we've ever heard in our yeah. lives. That's Even, very much Point Beach. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's exactly it. Yeah. I went to Point Beach, yep. Point Beach shows too. I saw Limitless, yep. Corey's band before yeah, yeah, yeah. Boundaries. Yeah, yeah. I saw Limitless play. I don't even remember what the fucking show is, but I just remember watching Limitless up front. I don't even know why I was there. Because I'm not from Connecticut. I'm from fucking near Boston. <laughs> yep. I don't know how the I didn't have a car until I was like 22. I don't even know why I was there. But... um. I saw boundaries. I think the first boundaries that I ever saw was at um it was at this like sober bar place. There was a, a place called Soba Bar. I soba think. bar? I think that's like what a, it was like called. towny, like soba. Yes. Fucking soba bar. I believe bar so. But yeah, it was there. As you're saying it, this rings a bell that I wouldn't it have was known like five minutes and ago. Tides, but yeah. Uh Degrader Kings. King shit. Yeah. Uh Boundaries played before I see him was out, I believe. And I was just there, and I watched, and I was like, oh, sick. Fuck yeah. I don't know what's going on. And then fast forward, you get a call, or get a Facebook message. <laughs> yeah, me and Corey are friends, kind of. Yeah. We've hung out at shows. We've talked about, like, Kingdom Hearts and video games. It's so weird even thinking about this. Because, like, ever since, like, I the first day I was with them on the road, like, mm -hmm. it's they've been my best friends since yeah. the very first day. It was it was unreal. It was magical. So now thinking back to there was a time when we weren't friends is like it's a different me. It's a different life. <laughs> yeah. It's like something I – but um, – There's a part of you that hadn't yet formed. Yeah. Uh, we worked a show. Uh, it was No Effects and Bad Religion in Brockton, my hometown the Brockton Rocks, like, local baseball stadium. We worked Huge. this big, big fucking show. The 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 drunk, the punk and drublick, is that what it is? Punk and drublick. Okay. It's no effects in Bad Religion and a million other fucking bands. Um, me and Corey worked that together, and it was weird. This guy I know from, like, breakdown music being in my hometown. It's on the high school where I went to for high school. It's on at Brockton High, okay, like, yeah. this baseball stadium. And it was just weird being with him doing that. And we were talking about boundaries. I told him like how I loved it. I loved like uh I loved watching them live. I liked the spring demo a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh I just I thought he was cool. We had a lot in common. We were friends after that. Uh and then he made some posts like need a fill-in on bass. And I liked it. And I was thinking like, how cool would it be if it was for boundaries? 
Because, like, I played bass. You know, I'm not. Fu- I'm still not fucking good at it. And don't give me any lip. Don't be like, oh, you're obviously good at it. You play shows. I'm not. I you're obviously good at it. You play shows. But whatever. I, tr- tr- I, have, as, I have to try mad hard. As, as someone who is currently learning an instrument and yeah. is not musical, what you guys do on stage is good. And, it, like, I am a, carried by everyone else. That's what everyone loves to say. But it's like, no, because you wouldn't be on stage, right? Like, they wouldn't have me play bass for them, right? Like, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if they were all caring, then fucking put me they in. They might. Put anyone in. I could die like, leaving here, and then they're going to hit you up. This I might curse <laughs> onto you. I'm cursing you with this. They're hitting Jesus up Peter. Christ. <laughs> All right, well, I'll get ready. I'll learn my six strings. Okay. You guys, five, six strings. I had to learn extra strings. Uh, four strings. Four, hell yeah. Fuck, okay. fuck. Thank yeah, God. No. Okay. That is just us being stupid. I don't think we'll ever have no. like extended scale. I don't like five string. Okay. I don't think Cody and Corey. I don't. Th- I don't know if they care about seven string. We're just all like six, four string. Fire. Yeah. We just Feels set classic, our set yeah. our shit up for drop tuning. Um. Uh, but hell yes. Corey messages me because I like this post, like, need a bass player to fill in for a tour. I was like, what if it were for boundaries? And I liked it. I was too afraid to message him just because I didn't want to be a punisher because mm-hmm. I didn't know him that well at that point. Like, I didn't yeah. I didn't know him like that. And, like, I liked it, and immediately he's like, can you fill in for boundaries? <laughs> just because, like, someone like someone had something come up. Yep. And I was like, yeah. It doesn't, like, I didn't even know if I could do it. Like, I don't think I could financially afford it. It was two weeks away. I was like, yes, absolutely, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And it's that, that was it. It's shocking how many... I've heard that story in so many different contexts of I got an opportunity. It was too soon. I didn't feel ready. I couldn't afford it. I didn't have time for it. A hundred reasons it couldn't work. And then I said, yes. <laughs> and it's I, like, yeah, I said, yes, immediately. Yeah. That's the, uh, it makes me feel very sane when I hear that. Cause I do the same thing still to this day. Like you I have am, to, I am overbooked and then something comes up and it's like, you God make it work. damn it. You have to sure. Let's yeah. add it into the pile. And it's, it's comforting because I think in those moments I feel crazy, right? Like mm-hmm. it's I, I work in this apartment all day. I'm here all day. And then once in a week, once a week, basically, I get to go travel and shoot something cool. And then for the other six and a half days, I'm back in these four walls. And like, yeah. I love it that way. I appreciate the like solitariness and that I can, yeah, dive and be in my own artist and whatever. A lot of good things. The bad part of that, though, is you're like, I just have no way to like bounce these ideas off to it. Know like what's normal and what's making me crazy. Like, am I crazy or is this like a normal passion kind of? And I've, when I hear you talk about things like that, it's like, oh, okay, this is all normal. This is what I, artists I don't do, think what it, people do. I don't think it's normal because I don't think enough people do it. Okay. I think it's a necessity. It's necessary for the soul. Yes. Like, yes, yes, yes. Go. Even if you fuck everything up, you are making your life worth living. Yep. Like, you have no money. You have nowhere to live. Like, your family's pissed at you. Your friends are pissed at you. If you're fulfilled, that's all that matters. That is how, like, I do everything. That's why I do this. That is brilliant. Yes. Like, it just, it's just... Like, what I was talking about with, like, plan B. Like, I got school. I got work. Like, imagine I, I fucking said no because I was like, ah, I got to do this thing Tuesday. Like, Which would have been rational. Fuck that. Yeah. Blow your life up, dude. Blow your fucking whole spot up for something. You know what I mean? Pack your, throw your shit into your car and just go. Yeah. Like, my thing is music. That's what I want to do. Everyone has their thing. It doesn't look the same. It doesn't behave the same way. But you have to fucking do it. Yep. It's a necessity because if you have no money and you don't have anything fucking going on, but your life is fulfilled, like who gives a shit? There are people who have money who want to kill themselves. I'm sorry if that's every day. Sorry if that's crazy. That's no, how I. Day. That's yes. the truth. Yes. That's yeah. like, like governors, senators, people with lives, 401ks, jobs, families. They look at it all, this mountain they fucking built, and they're not happy with it because they didn't fulfill themselves. Because mm-hmm. the reality is, there is a selfish fucking animal in each of us right there is there is a a monkey there is a a chimp brain that wants to do something and it's different for everybody and if you do not nurture that you're gonna hate your fucking life that's why i throw myself at this one thing this is all that makes sense to me i couldn't agree more with you yeah there's some i think it's an fdr quote that's on my wall uh and the the summer it's called the man in the arena quote it's kind of a famous passage but the the last piece of it is one that i think uh summarizes what you're saying and it's something to the effect of like go out and fail there's no effort without errors and shortcomings but at least you'll never be one of the timid people who never got to find out yeah fuck that and it's like yes exactly that go it's better to fail than to never find out it's better to have things go wrong it's better to have your art not work than to always wonder what would have happened if i had committed myself to drawing or to fucking knitting weaving whatever your thing is like yeah go find out what that there are people like in canvas canvas there are people in kansas Mm -hmm. Who have never seen the ocean yep that's fucking crazy yep that's crazy like massachusetts i live on the water it's right sure. there yeah like i have that privilege but like i would go fucking see it i want to see everything mm-hmm. you know 
I want to see it all. I want to. I can't wait to go to Japan. I can't wait to go to Australia. I can't wait to go back to Europe. Just see what the fuck it is. Look out the window and be like, oh wow, that. Like yeah. it. It's just. It's stupid, but the looking at the stupid mountain or the stupid cloud while I'm in like Belgium, like it makes life perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, and th it's things that a job moving up a corporate ladder could never do. Yep. It's what you have to do. It's what you owe to yourself. It's what you owe to the world. Yep. Like you, to be selfish is to be perfect to me. You know what I mean? I wish my girlfriend was more selfish. <laughs> I wish she told me no on things. Because, like, she drove me here just to, like, we're going to get pizza after. She loves pizza, and it's this crazy, beautiful spot. Have you been to Little Rendezvous? I don't think I have, actually. Brother. Yeah. I am ignorant when it comes to food. That Brother, is... it is amazing. Okay. It's just a stupid pizza spot. But, it like, I we're all, we all like pizza a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's a very, I like it a lot. Um, she she just came with me. Like, just, I'm going to do this. She's, like, out front playing her Switch, I think. Like, I'm so grateful to have someone in my life to do that. I wish she would, she told me no. I have to, I have to go like like I have to do combat sports. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everyone needs to be selfish with everything because like not selfish like you know fucking tell your <laughs> your kid I'm not buying you clothes. I don't mean selfish like that. Like steal from your mom. Just selfish like I think prioritize yourself. Yeah, maybe. like yeah. I, I gotta I gotta go across the country with no money and be gone and absent. I gotta do this. I just, yeah. I have to see the world for myself. I got to leave my family. <laughs> I got to, I got to uproot my life. I got to quit my job. You have to. I think everyone like just has to pursue what they want the most. Hell yeah. Um, just a quick little side note there. One, uh, we're just about at our hour and we're going to keep going here. Uh, but the reason I mentioned that is because I didn't know she was outside. <laughs> so if you want to bring her in, if she wants oh, to play, no. switch with a cat yeah. upstairs somewhere warm and cozy. Then I, I don't think she's really outside. I think she went okay. to like Dunkin' Donuts or something. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. As long as she's taking care of you. Yeah, I felt bad that no. someone was waiting outside for us. Um, but yeah, if you need to text her, but yeah, we're about an hour in. We'll probably do another, I don't know, 15 minutes, half hour or so. Okay. Um, last couple little things here. Um, where you get the boundaries call, you join boundaries. Uh, what is now kind of stood out as highlights from boundaries? So you've been on this crazy journey with them. You've been through a bunch of records, you've been through a bunch of, yeah, learning lessons along the way. Uh, what are some highlights? What are some things you've learned in this journey? Like what stands out as you, as you reflect on this, what must be a whirlwind of a couple few years here? Uh, what's something that, yeah that really is on the, the forefront of your mind as you reflect on it? Is there an event, a time, a place, uh, a person? Yeah. Uh, an accomplishment, a show you guys play? I guess almost no, because I learn something from them every day. Great. And that's not just like a movie quote exaggeration. Or like, a podcast, something from everyone. But that's yeah, <laughs> it, like they, they like, like Matt and Corey, Tim and Cody, they're all so fucking good yeah. and smart with everything. They teach me shit every day. Corey corrects me every day on something I was wrong about. Like I what's just, something you're currently learning then? So in the context of uh, yeah, Corey correcting you, what's the most recent thing he's been correcting you on? How to play my instrument. Okay. <laughs> no, he doesn't He doesn't do that. Um, I, I don't even know. Just like the intri intricacies of uh, this world, this mm -hmm. industry. Because like we're getting more in it. Like more words yeah. are being thrown at us more more responsibilities being thrown at us. Things are shifting. Um, is that exciting or daunting or some amount of both? Oh, it's not It's not daunting at all. Interesting. That's all I want. Like, yeah. it's it's scary that we can fail, yeah. but I, like, everyone fails at some point. Every mm -hmm. band breaks up. Everyone, like, it just ends someday for everybody, so I can't, you can't be worried about it. I can't be afraid of it. Hell yeah. Like, I'm just happy. I'm grateful that I'm getting this every day. You know what That's I mean? It's an interesting... Um, I I think generally when bands this is kind of a tangent I'm looping back to but I think generally when bands succeed it's not like the first band that succeeds and what I mean is like most people have a middle school band that failed and a high school band that failed and then yeah. a college band and then somewhere yeah. after college or college age the right group of five guys come together and one piece that I I've always assumed yeah that's about gaining experience and yeah the first effort has to be bad we have to be bad at something when we start yeah. that all makes sense the other piece there that I hadn't quite considered is that you've had bands fail before so now that thing is maybe less scary than it was where it's like, yeah, this can happen. It will happen someday. It's a, it's on the table. Yeah. My job, instead of spending my years going, what if your job is like, no, that will happen. So now let's enjoy the, the good years while we have them, which I think is a, a much more mature and responsible perspective. But if yeah. boundaries is your first band, then you don't get that perspective. And oh, no. it's an interesting benefit of having the, the high school bands. No. Control. And we're, we're all that way. We've all like, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. most people, who are seeing any kind of, I hope, I guess I'm hopeful on mm -hmm. this. I don't know if it's true.
But if people are doing well in a band, I think they came from failure. Yeah. You know, because this this is so, it's so hard to like actually get anyone to listen. I think that's true, but I've never looked at Bring Me the Horizon and been like, I bet you guys sucked in high school, right? Like I look at them and go, oh, yeah. we were savants. But, but the they start. they came from a time where they were laying the groundwork. Mm -hmm. So they I don't think they could suck. Because they were the ones doing it. I'm sure they would disagree and say yeah. that they were ass and that yeah. before whatever suicide well, that, season is, like, yeah. count your blessings, like whatever was before that. Well, there were there are live is, videos of them, like I think they fucking sound terrible. <laughs> there are videos, like I yeah. love Whitechapel. I watch yeah. videos of Whitechapel from 2005, 2006, and they're fucking horrible. <laughs> but that's not the point. It's beautiful. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they were they were doing this. They were the ones yeah. starting it. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, like that video of like Devil Wears Prada playing like that fairground in yeah. front of just people and they yep. they do Texas is South. Yeah. Like, uh, it's terrible. It's objectively yeah. terrible, but it's perfect. It, yeah. it could not be anything else. It had to be like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. But right now, 2024, that groundwork has been laid for fuck for 20 years. Yeah. If you suck, like, you suck. There's no, there's no <laughs> sure. nuance to it anymore. <laughs> sure. Um, See, so you have to suck and then get good. And then not just get good and get proficient. You need to be exemplary. I don't know if I said that right. You're close. Exemplary. Exempl no, yeah, right? The word's hard. Um, you need to be, like, astonishing Exemplary. almost. Exemplary? You yeah. Have, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in the mud with you. Um, and it gets harder, like, yeah. the higher you go. Because, now, like, each... Yes. You're jumping from a pond... Like, you were a big fish in a little pond. You jump to another. Now you're the same size as everyone else. Mm -hmm. You're not as amazing you know what i mean i think the other layer of this that i i'll use my music music video analogy there's also a seltzer here if you would prefer a seltzer but whatever oh, I love your boat. Death. um my analogy here is in music videos it's like there's a part when you get your camera and the first couple of years of getting good with your camera is really about learning how to use the camera like yeah when we're talking about getting good really what we're saying is like is stuff exposed right are things in frame are things balanced like there's very like basic criteria and then I got to a point, or I feel like I'm at a point now where it's like getting better at music videos isn't about that anymore. It's not about having things in frame. It's not about the ratios or the colors. It's about this like abstract creative idea that I can come up with. And that's where I think Eric shines. It's like, uh, yeah, Eric Easterday is like, I think he's just so brilliant at the things he come up, comes up with and the things that come out of his brain I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And that always blows my mind. But it's like, that's not camera competency anymore. And the reason I bring this up is because like with boundaries, it's like, there's a part where boundaries will be growing, where Nathan is growing as an instrumentalist, where it's part of it is just getting good at bass. It's yeah. just, can I play this stuff? Can I be yeah. on stage? Can I perform? And now you guys are at a point where it's like musicianship isn't, or technical skill isn't the, the thing anymore. It's musicianship, which yeah. is much different and much harder to like quantify and figure out and learn and get better at. Yeah. And that seems like, yeah, the challenge of the band you're talking about more being a small fish in the big pond. It's like, well, in the small pond, it was a very clear path from A to B. Mm -hmm. And now that you're in the big pond, it's like, how do you become a better musician? That's a different thing than becoming a good local band or a good bass player. Yeah. And it seems like that, yeah, the, the challenges just continue to scale and morph into things where it's like, oh, it's not physical skill anymore. There's some like other thing that we're yeah. now trying to learn and master and come to terms with. And that's the, the factor that'll promote the most growth for us. Where it's just... I don't know. It's a very strange thing. And I'm, yeah, I guess I'm curious for the, the band side of it. It's like, yeah, how do you, how does batter, how does boundaries get better from here? So you have this record coming out. And I guess my question is then like, how does the record move boundaries forward? How does boundaries continue to grow? Where is the, the uh, road going? We've here? been joking that we don't, <laughs> that we suck now. <laughs> that the growth has stopped. <laughs> That's been the joke. Do uh, buy the record though. Yeah. No, I mean, no, this, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, after quiet. this record is what I mean, because <laughs> yeah. we wrote this record and like, we did Bearing Brightness, mm -hmm. and it was it wasn't hard, but it was uh, emotional. Mm -hmm. We made this artsy fartsy thing yeah. that took a lot out of all of us. It's a yep. cold sounding record. Yep, it almost feels like it sucks the life out of everything. Uh, that was not Death Is Little More. It making that record was so fun, but it was so natural. Everything came so easily uh and we feel like far and away that it is the best music we, any of us have ever been a part of i listen to the record and i love it every time a lot of every any music i've ever made in my life and this is the same for other people like you you uh 
ping pong mm -hmm. like on loving and hating it oh, you yeah. listen and you're like this is great and then you listen again and you're like it's over the dream is dead i'm shot i should <laughs> yeah, hang it up always. this is the worst day of my life yeah and then you listen to it again it's like ah it's not that bad and you listen to it again it's like i should i should jump off a building <laughs> i am not fit for this mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen once with this record i really i really believe in it i really love it even if it comes out and it flops like i still i still love it i still love what we made we make every song together you know what I mean? We do it all in a room. We do it with Randy. That's cool. Like everything is not everything is a compromise because we agree on so many things. We're all just like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're all on this a similar wavelength. We've all communicated. We've all communicated to the point where we, we don't need to communicate things like mm. that anymore. We all want the same thing. Yeah. Um so this record is just it's everything we want out of Metalcore. It's everything we want to express. It's all the music that we love because it's it's not out yet, but it's a fucking roller coaster. I know there were a few people that were like, "I don't like the cleans," but like the record is not that. I love the cleans for what it's worth. Yeah, they rule. <laughs> Tim's a genius. Yeah. Tim's yeah. too. Tim's so good at everything he does. That's, uh, my my alley's like the more metalcore yeah. side of stuff. Yeah. So I feel like that's like y'all like giving me a little olive branch of like, dude, come 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 hang out with us for the a little bit. The record is completely insane. Hell yes! Like it, I'm eager. it 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 is a roller coaster the Good. whole time and every one of my friends and loved ones we've showed it to has offered nothing but like like very very yeah. tender praises to us and i be i believe in it That's, i believe in it truly yeah um i like it record rules i can't i can't wait for everyone to hear it even if you don't like it i just i can't wait for someone to hear it and like just it, experience it hopefully I, I hope they enjoy it but if they don't it you know whatever so yes. I, don't, I don't care I don't care what you do what you like. <laughs> um, I only, I try to only care about what people like. Yeah. If people don't like it. Like things go over everyone's head. I don't like a ton of shit. Mm -hmm. Like everything's not for everyone. I just I just focus on like like you love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, but I want to talk about. I do you have other things? I want. I feel like I haven't talked about Crush at all. I would love to. That was my last thing here. Is yeah. We have the headlining tour coming up. Uh, yeah, buy tickets. It's full U.S. coming up. Make sure we go to that Death is a Little More Boundaries headliner. Yeah. Um, go buy tickets. Crush Plus Plus. Yeah. Let's touch on it for a few minutes here. Uh, my one, I love it. I think it's really fun, like divergence from the Boundaries world of like it's it's very clearly its own thing that is birthed from the same like metalcore god somehow to me, but yeah. like a very different essence from, yeah, from the Boundaries. What I loved about the Crush Plus Plus stuff is I feel like the role that was very cohesive. So you mentioned that it was like the remnants of a previous band mm -hmm. that kind of got scrapped and then was like, this is what we're going to do. And I think it was really well done because mm -hmm. I, as I consumed the record, I was like, oh, this is a... A professional band putting out a record this isn't like kids being like <laughs> let's do this together that right where it, it all felt cohesive it all felt like there's an entity being like here is this cosmic thing we yeah. made for you and it was that well was really like that that was the intent because we almost wanted the band to be like uh not like the gorillas and that gorillas mm -hmm. is like a made-up band and a commentary on bands but like you know when you watch like like teen sitcoms or like cartoons, there's a made up band within the universe. Mm -hmm. We wanted Crush to be that in real life. I love like that. you remember, yeah, like yeah. like on SpongeBob, like Boys Who Cry. <laughs> okay. Like it's like the boy band that Pearl likes, like Mr. Krabs' whale daughter. She's like, I love Boys Who Cry. And it's these three guys. They're just in sync. They're like three in sync fishes. Like that's what we wanted to be. We wanted to be like a fictional band in real life. Um. And that's like I feel like everything we set out to do when we laid out what we wanted to do post Robin Wood because Robin Wood like I love those songs that was like Tom's solo thing and we were just like a backing band because Tom wrote it mm -hmm. all uh, he's a singer of Crush um, we laid out post Robin Wood like what we wanted because we had all these songs and me and Ethan and uh, Hunter Lenoir who left Crush but he's still one of my best friends Shout out, yes we all. Uh, we all wrote songs together. You know, everyone contributed completely for this Crush record. Um, we laid it all out flat at the beginning. And I think every single thing we talked about, because Boundaries, there isn't a lot of talking. It's just like, we're going to do this, and then we do it, and it's sick. Mm -hmm. But Crush, there's so much talking and deliberating between each of us that it's, al it's almost like pulling teeth, because we're all very different. Mm -hmm. um, but every single thing we said we wanted to do, we did. Like we were like, we want to make a demo. 
We want to send it to Randy. We want to do the record with Randy. We want to put it out. We want to do music videos that are this. White room, car, suits, all, like, every single thing we did, we self-released it. We were hoping, like, to, like, someone would magically be like, oh, here's fame. But we self-released it to, like, unbelievably, overwhelmingly, like, positive praise. Very grateful. Um, I, I love the record. It comes from, uh, like, post-hardcore and... Uh, a time that is gone that people miss like the whole uh, when we were young fest like we wanted to do that like that we wanted to lean into that whole thing we started the crush stuff like in 2020 but it just took so long to come out with just like all the different things we were doing yeah um, we wanted to lean into the whole scene is back thing not like in a corporate way because we wanted to do it back 2020 before that was like uh, in the air you know before that was on the radio Um but we all have a love for post-hardcore, for mallcore, for scene music, and we wanted to put a love letter out to it. And to me, the record sounds like everything. And that's a mm -hmm. lot of the things people have been saying, is that it sounds like every moment in post-hardcore history, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. And I'm grateful that not only people understood it, but we were able to do it properly for people to even understand. Because mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes bands set out this intent, they're like, oh, this is what we're going for. And then you listen to it, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yep. This is not that, and it sounds like shit, and you're weird. And uh, Dude, I've learned, I do my best not to tell bands they sound like other bands, because whenever I hear something, my yeah. first instinct is always like, oh, it sounds like this band that I've heard. And whenever I say that, I mean it as a compliment of like, oh, I like yeah. this other thing. It sounds like this thing I like. Yeah. Well done. And what people always, where that always gets lost in translation is like, what I think about this comparison, what you think about this comparison are very different things. Oh, yeah. So if I say, this sounds just like blah, blah, blah. And in your head, you're going, blah, blah, blah is so fucking corny. Then it's like, fuck, I insulted you by accident. Yeah. And it's this weird thing. Oh, yeah, of, I've done that. Yeah. yeah you're like, oh, dude, I love Census Fail. And they're like, yeah. oh, Census Fail sucks. It's like, yeah. oh, well, then you shouldn't have uh, written this thing that sounds exactly like them. Yes. That's not my fault. <laughs> so it's cool that the feedback you guys got, uh, yeah, kind of aligned with what yeah. you're hoping for. With, like, yeah, I mean, like, even if it fell on deaf ears and no one understood it, like, I'd rather that than, like, yeah. I know the record we made is is like like superlative you know mm -hmm. what i mean it is it is the most that even if like no one understood i still know that i yep. still made that record and i could be proud about it forever yeah the bonus is that like we made it and people like it mm -hmm. and i hope it continues because we've been talking i don't know i can't speak on it much yet because none of it's public but hopefully you will be seeing more of crush on the road and on the internet and all Hell that. Yeah. I've been seeing, yeah, some more pictures pop up on the socials recently in the last yeah. couple of days. So I assume there's, yeah, some some cooking happening right now that we're starting to tease. And even those photos, I think, are branded cohesively with the rest of the stuff. Oh, there's so, more music. Yeah, okay, yeah. There, there is more music. Hell yeah, okay. Because yeah. not only do you have multiple songwriters in the band who just write, but there are songs that we just sat on yep. that we, we're going to put out. So there is more, and it will come out. Even if... I don't want this, but even if Crush remained like an internet project, there will mm -hmm. be music because it's it's too sick. Like yeah. the, Tom and Ethan are too smart. Like they're, they, they're too good at writing songs and they always have been. So there will be more Crush stuff. And I just I just want everyone to hear it. Even if you don't like it, I just want you to hear it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, is there anything we can say? You said there's more music. Is there anything we can tease about when that music may be coming? Or is that all TBD um, allegedly? Yeah, I mean... That's all. Like, it it will come out. It'll happen. It'll come out, and it'll come out soon. Because if it doesn't come out soon, we're gonna you're gonna lose all the you know all the steam. Yeah. And I don't want that. Yeah. So it'll come out. It'll come out soon. It'll yeah. be sick. Not um, too soon because the record just came out. Yes. Came out on February 9th. Okay. It's been a month. Damn. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that recent. That's incredible yeah. that it's yeah done so well in that short of time. I, yeah. I thought it was like six months old or something. For no, some no, no, no. We so. We <laughs> show us how much research. <laughs> well, no, because we put out a single for it last April. Like we just dropped okay. a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's been taking. It's the someone's like flushing the toilet or running a sink, and you can hear the pipes through the mic. It's the most annoying thing. Really? Yeah, that's what that. So is. have you done this before? Yeah. Yeah, like in interviews in the middle of it, doing like, oh, it's the pipes. Like this has happened. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever noticed it. I've noticed it and just kind of ignored oh. it. So. You're the first one. Am I blowing to, up your spot right blowing now? Blowing up my spot. <laughs> Surprise, we're in a basement. Um, yeah, no worries at all. Um, I was hoping you'd be like, yeah, everyone does that. Because then I could make a super cut of everyone noticing the pipes. <laughs> but um, 
<laughs> if you want to make a super cut, we could we could pretend it happened. We put out a song like April 2023 off this full length just because we wanted to put music out. Yeah. And it wasn't a single. It didn't have a music video. It was like, here's this song. Just listen to it. Hope you like it. And then we started the rollout late, late last year. Like late, I think like December, November, started putting out the music videos and then came out in February. I'm grateful. We wanted oh, yeah. the longest time to put it out during the summer because I feel like it's a very summer sounding record. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that matters. All that matters know, is that yeah. people hear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that, yeah, I think generally bands get caught waiting for the perfect moment and it's like the perfect the, moment was yesterday. Yeah, there isn't a perfect moment. Yeah. It'll never come. Yeah. It, the only time it's a perfect moment is uh, you're not aware of it. Yep. Is you just do it and it just sure. so happened to be the perfect moment. Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, lightning strikes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But hell yes. Uh, any like challenges there? I, I, you were a vocalist in Regime, uh, and I know with Boundaries you're doing some backing vocals, and it seems like with Crush, from my perception, it seems like you're doing even like more backing vocals in Crush than you are I, in Boundaries. I do the same thing in both oh. bands, yeah. <laughs> I play bass and scream in both Is bands. Is there any desire to bring the scream more to the forefront to get you more more reps, more more scream time, or is that something you're happy to kind of do as backing? Um, I always, like, I always imagine myself as... A front man in a band, and that's why in my bands when I started out, I was. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to once again be the vocalist in a band, but uh, just what's going on right now is just working. Yeah. I don't think about it a lot, just because I feel like I'd bum myself out if I was like, you didn't do what you wanted to. But I also, I feel fulfilled, you know yeah. what I mean? I don't feel like, Boundaries is such a perfect environment for me because Matt doesn't want to talk. And I'm completely fucking full of myself, but I want to talk the whole time. You know what I mean? So, like, I couldn't have a more perfect environment on stage. Hell yeah. I don't have to, like, I don't have to match heads with him. We don't, yeah. I don't have to, they don't, there doesn't have to be compromise. Tim talks too, but, like, mm -hmm. we all, we work it all out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Matt just doesn't want to talk because he doesn't have, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to be it's like. not him. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. No. He doesn't want to be, like, 80s, like, Steel Panther, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I get ready to rock. Yep. Like that's not him. And that's yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a loser. <laughs> so like I I'm happy to do that. My I, yeah, yeah. I My analogy it, is like I didn't want to do YouTube stuff of like, here's 10 beginner camera tips kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And like it feels like a similar thing. I identify with yeah. Matt on that. Yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't be on stage and be like, what's up, Hartford? I'm like, yeah, let me do my shit. And Dude, then, but when he does do stuff like that, like my whole body it rushes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like like I can't believe it. He's yeah. such a force. He's such yes. a monster of a front man. I can't yeah. believe him. Yeah. He's the he's the greatest. Yeah. But no, it's I feel completely fulfilled like doing what I'm doing right now that like it doesn't bother me. I'm not like a front man in the band because I, I feel like you know in a way i am because i command the, yeah. i command the stage i i talk to the crowd i, I say the piece between songs and i get to look at everyone i get to have the feeling because for me like the biggest reason i want to do this like when i watched that slipknot dvd when i watched metallica live in russia all i want to experience is people in front of me like that's all that's all it is. A lot of people is like they want to make art, put it out. They want to make money. They are, some people are predators, predatory. They want to take advantage of girls of like everyone has their motivation. Unfortunate mm -hmm. that's that's some people's motivation, but everyone has a motivation good or bad. Yep. And I don't know if it's stupid or not, but my motivation is I just want to be in front of people and I want to have that moment. Like I always saw interviews where people are like, being in a band kind of sucks, except sometimes 30 minutes a night for a month, you, you're 30 minutes, you're the coolest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's true, but it like it's not me being the coolest guy in the world because I don't care about that. I just care about sharing this moment with people. You mm -hmm. know, like they care about the music. I care about the music. Mm -hmm. I care about what we're going to do together, what we're going to exchange. When I play, it feels more like a conversation. You know what I mean? I move, I play something, they move, they do something, we feed off each other, we bounce off each other. It's a talk, it's a dance. It's not, it's not like I am rock god. Yep. You need to feed my ego. Yeah. That is a big thing. Like no one, none of boundaries has that. Right. We all have this moment together. We all share it together. On stage. The five of us are one body, and we are speaking to the crowd, the other body. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
I love that. I get a real sense of like gratitude from you, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, like, this can be taken away from me tomorrow. Yeah. And it can just be gone for any reason. I could die any reason. This could end for me tomorrow, and I don't get to play shows anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful for it every day, and I never won't be. I, I really appreciate that, and I think, yeah, the, the show is called Something From Everyone. I've always felt, it's always been a little something like self-conscious for me. Of like, I recognize it's a little tacky, but it's one of those, like, I really do believe that I, I'm trying to soak up the good from all the people around me. And mm-hmm. from you today, I've really gathered this, like, this gratitude that I think is very genuine and very, like, deep-rooted in you. Of like, there's not an ounce of your brain going, like, maybe I should have stuck with that one month of college maybe i should have seen that like, shit sucked you know <laughs> it's like blue. it seems like every part of your brain is firing of like this is where i'm supposed to be i'm going to stay here as long as the universe wills me to stay yes, here as long and as it, i'm allowed to and it feels like a great perspective because i think yeah the other the, the pitfall i guess that maybe i run into sometimes like this is where i'm supposed to be what if this isn't where i can be anymore mm-hmm. and what i'm hearing from you is a good sense of like this is where i can be and i'll be here and if i can't be here then I'll cross the next bridge. But I'm going to be here and make sure I'm soaking in this thing while I have it. I will do everything in my power and do everything to myself to make sure, to set myself up for the future, right? A big thing within boundaries is we're worried about the long term. Of course, yeah. Uh, Everything we do, we set up for later. Mm -hmm. We're not worried about right now the instant gratification. Um, Because we all want to do this as long as we can. Not like with money, not like, like we just... We just love this. We love playing. Mm -hmm. We love making music and we love making it together. We just want to do this forever. And that is a conscious choice every day. I think bands talk about like, we want to do this forever. Yeah. And I I want to make very clear that it's like, that's a conscious choice in like, for for me with videos, right? Like I think I have a similar thing of like, I want to do videos forever. That is Mm -hmm. what I am committed to. That is where I think I'm going to spend the rest of my time. Uh, that is not just having no plan B. That is certainly a part of it. That is certainly, yes, there are many factors. But Mm -hmm. one part of that is like every day choosing to make the long term successful. And one part of that is like in contract negotiations of like, I'm not going to try and gouge you for money. I'm going to gamble that we're going to start a relationship now that will last longer than I could imagine it lasting. And if that's the case, then I'll make more money and this X amount doesn't matter right now. And for boundaries, planning to do it a long time, like there's a thing of guarantees, right? Like there is some sense where you guys could say, let's double our guarantee. Let's make all the money we can right now yeah. and assume that venues might not have you back as frequently because of the premium. Mm-hmm. But there's a choice every day to go, no, let's let's do 90% of our guarantee so that we can make sure that they know that we love them and that we're going to come back and give them a great thing and they feel like they have a good mm-hmm. venue. And this idea of like doing it forever is like, I don't know, I think we like to make this poetic like – more like yeah this poetic thing it's like no this is an everyday choice of every day we're kind to the venue staff Mm -hmm. every day we're kind in our negotiation we're kind to the people at the merch table like we're doing everything all the time to make sure this goes on i think that's a a level of work that doesn't always get appreciated uh that i think you guys do a great job of of like yeah no one has a bad thing to say about you it is all positive and Mm -hmm. that is what will keep this thing this going forever is like it's that it's all the positive interactions of people who then want to put a hand in and help you guys out whenever that time comes. Well, forever, time is. forever is impossible. Sure. Just because like even Iron Maiden isn't going to go forever. Yep. One of like Bruce Dickinson is going to die one day. Yep. I don't want him to. The guy rules, but yep. he's gonna. Yep. Can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. So it, like this all has to come, maybe not crashing down, but yeah. it like it all. Hopefully it all, has a bow on it. Yeah. End, but yeah. It all, it all yeah. ends one day. Yep. And uh, you can't be worried about that. Yeah. You know, like even when you were talking about, um, you want to make videos and like that might like there, there might be a possibility something might happen where that's no longer possible like that is just how it is you yep. know we don't have control over everything we can do our best like i know i said no plan b you should have side hustles you should have interests you should have you should better yourself every day outside of this but mm-hmm. i meant specifically like like you have your main goal mm-hmm. and when you're not doing that you have other things to embolden yourself to make yep. yourself more well-rounded because you need side hustles to just even get by um but hell yeah this it couldn't last forever for anyone there's an there's an expiration date for everything and everyone and mm-hmm. that's just how it has to be it could not nothing yep. could sustain forever but that's what's important is what we do while we can mm-hmm. you know you have the means of doing something you should you have the the, the care to do something you should. Yep. And I don't think enough people do that. Not just like in a grand scale way, like you should move to 
Africa and like, like just you want to do something, do it. Mm -hmm. There's like nothing should stop you. You don't know where to start. There's nowhere good to start. You yep. know, you're like, ah, oh, I wanted to learn guitar, but like, I don't know what strings to get. Like that doesn't fucking matter. Like they're, they're like what sets someone apart who was ever going to do it was just to to go for it. And someone who's like yep. the biggest proponent of that like character trait is Corey. Mm -hmm. Corey just like sees something and he's like, I'm gonna do that. I just said it out loud and I don't do it as much as I wish I did. Corey does it with everything. He mm -hmm. sees something, he's like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that right now, today. It doesn't, I don't even know how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> it doesn't even matter, it's already yeah. done. He's like, it's like, it's already done. Yep. Like that he now knows about it. Because in the future it will happen. Mm -hmm. Like that's how he is. He's he's brilliant. And he's that so was, yeah. he's so fucking humble. Yeah. And he's so smart. And he can just do anything. He would never. I don't. I don't think he wants to do interviews because he just. I don't know. He might. I don't want to speak for him. But he just like he has no interest in talking about himself. Yeah. He just he just does what he wants when he wants to do it, and he does it beautifully. I'll, I don't want to spoil I'll trick more your camp in. <laughs> I don't want to spoil what he's been up to, but as far as this coming headliner goes, we have some really something really fucking cool. Hell yeah. We're playing a really really long set. The most boundaries has ever played songs from every record, every record. Uh Hartford County Misery, let's go. We are. Hell yeah. We're playing songs. I wanted to plug this just because in case anyone wanted to uh, wanted to know, there is we got some cool fucking shit for the shows. Yes. We went above and beyond. We spent money that we could have paid out to ourselves because we're all fucking broke right now. <laughs> but we had a big lump of money that we could have spent to put in our pockets to get us by or we could have bought something for the long run that we now have forever and everyone's going to see it on the tour. Hell it's yes. going to be very fucking cool. Hell yes. I'm thinking of all the bad, of like like a giraffe is in my yeah, brain. Yeah, it I'm is like, a giraffe. You just bought like a zoo animal. It's, your, it's a giraffe. His name is Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> when we make Austin Evans from Orthodox ride him. <laughs> Hell yes. Well, I look forward to unveiling that across the yeah. country. Hell yeah, man. Uh, as we work to wrap up here, uh, one thing I like to leave off on. Um, we talk a lot about music, a lot about the band stuff, a lot about the stressors, the work stuff here. What is What are you doing outside of music, outside of all this band yeah. stuff? Uh, yeah, we talk about video games. I think is where we're gonna go with this. Uh, yeah, who is Nathan outside of all this music stuff? Any other hobbies that we should be aware of? Any other passions that happen? <laughs> Absolutely outside of this? not. What else is going on here? There is no. There isn't. <laughs> like there just isn't. I hang out with my my girlfriend. Her name is Coral. She's beautiful. I love her. Shout out. I I uh, love food. Yes. I cook sometimes. If pizza falls off the face of the earth, what's the next number one? A oh, pizza's not even number one for me My in, bad. in so, just food. No, it's, so I didn't, no, 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 it's okay. I, I Pizza specifically is very interesting in that, like, everywhere you go, pizza's the same thing. It's dough, yeah. cheese, sauce. Sure. But it's interesting to me that it can be so different in how long you let the dough ferment, if it's sourdough, how you compose your tomato sauce with basil, without basil, without sugar. Like, because some people do it plain, some people do it robust, some people make it way too fucking crazy. Like... Pizza to me is just interesting in that it is something so simple, but it is so different. Sure. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Like anywhere you go. Yep. And specifically, like this place, Little Rendezvous, I mentioned, I do not know what the fucking deal is. Okay. I was a pizza chef for a few years. I, I love pizza. Okay. It's not even something I would say I'm passionate about. It's something I'm stoked about. I'm like, fuck yeah, pizza. You know what I mean? Uh, that's everybody, but I, like, I have an interest just in from being a chef for a few years. Uh, I do love to cook. I love food and culinary in general. I try, like, I watch a lot of videos. I read a lot okay. on it. I cook a lot. I wish I cooked more when I was at home because I have this beautiful kitchen where I'm living right now. Um, you got like a secret weapon kind of dish? Like, if, if, the, if the band was coming over tonight and you had to impress everyone uh, with the dish, like, what's that dish? Well, they, Matt's vegan and Corey and Tim are vegetarian. Cody eats meat just like me, but he is a picky, like, chicken nuggy, french fry, like, little <laughs> okay. baby dipshit. He's he's trying more things, though. I think he tried more food, like, last year on the road with us than, like, he ever has sure. in his life. Sure. Um, but well, we used to, like, just hang out. Like, during COVID, there's nothing to do, no shows to be had. We, like, I would just come and stay in Connecticut for a week. I would cook for everybody. I would cook vegan pizza. I'd cook like uh, curry, vegan dishes. Learned a lot about making vegan food just because having to make it for like Matt and our other vegan friends at the time. Uh, 
I don't know if I have a secret weapon just because, like, I want to try to make something new every time. And, like, at the studio, we had, like, pizza night, like, where I would make everyone pizzas. But the last time I did it, it was, like, a bummer just because, like, the oven's not, like, built for pizza. And we got this mm-hmm. pizza stone and it just didn't fucking work. And <laughs> okay. It just, di- like, the circumstances were not yeah. prime. To yeah. make a good pizza, and I was bummed about it. No one else was bummed about it. Everyone was like, "Thank you for making this pizza," but I was bummed about it just because I was like, "I I know I am capable of way more than this," um, but it'll happen again. I love cooking. I love cooking for everyone. Hell like yeah. I like at, I've been at parties and like like I just like keep to myself. You know what I mean? So like when I'm with my friends and we're all hanging out, like we had we stayed at the studio once. Like all of Boundaries and Orthodox was there because it was like between a show. We we're on tour with Varials. We just all stayed at the studio together. I think we did a big pizza night. Like I love just keeping to myself and like cooking food while everyone else is having fun. I don't. I think I'm just talking about myself at this point. I'm interested. <laughs> uh, last question before we wrap up on is what is the video game right now? You mentioned we're in Discord all day. What is the game that is rotting your brain? Currently? So I've been playing Hell Divers like everyone else because it sure. just came out. Yes, yes, yes. But like what I think is more important to talk about is that I think I've quit League of Legends for good. Congratulations. I'm just coming out for RuneScape problem. So I, yeah. This, yeah. Corey I still plays it. RuneScape like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He had at the studio, Corey, we all have our PCs. Yep. We all bring our computers to the studio. <laughs> we're, we're all complete losers. Everyone except Tim because Tim doesn't play video games. Okay. Tim, Tim goes to bed at 9 p.m. Hell we all stay up until 5 a.m. playing video games. Fire. Um, Corey had his computer with his monitor. He had three different runescape accounts he was farming on all at once yep. just like we click do this all right do that do that wood um, you know what i mean mm-hmm. oh yes <laughs> he's a monster he's a genius i can't believe him uh i quit fix yes i quit league i don't i don't want to but i recognize it is it is bad for me yeah like the yeah. only issue in my relationship and i know my girlfriend's gonna watch this like the only issue in my relationship is i would like look at my girlfriend and be like you fucking suck at this game because <laughs> she plays video games she plays as much as me and like we'd, she'd be my my support. Like Batu, I'd be like, you are just fucking terrible. How are you? <laughs> how are like, how are you a higher level? She's gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> I'm trash too. I'm bronze. I'm not good at the game. I tried really hard to get good at the game. I put a lot of energy and care into it, and it was not like this is why I say I do nothing because like I like other people do combat sports. Other people race cars. I'm 27. People have like lives. Yep. And they do shit. I don't do anything. I play fucking video games like a fucking moron. I know everyone plays video games, but like yeah. Corey like does shit with his life. <laughs> I like I'm so serious. <laughs> I know someone's gonna watch this and think it's funny. And then I'm just being like uh I don't even know if this is humble. I don't even think this is a humble thing. I, I'm just I'm so serious. I don't do anything. And uh playing league just so bad for my brain. Austin from Orthodox begs me to play with him. Because he 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 would play like jungle. I don't know if anyone even fucking league is such a bad thing to talk about. It's such a taboo for the brain. Yeah, but like it is so important to me that I stop playing because it's it was yeah. like putting on the symbiote, yeah. putting on like the black Spider Man suit. <laughs> it made me evil. It made me hate my life because I put so much care yeah. and focus into this stupid fucking video game yeah. that I don't even like. I didn't want to go pro. Yeah. I didn't want to Twitch stream. I didn't want like I didn't care. I didn't You're not actually doing that for bronze. I'll tell yeah, you what. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't even actually fucking care. But I put so much focus in it, like like yeah. trying to learn things, yep. and it just didn't matter. I had the exact same moment with RuneScape, and that's yeah, yeah, basically where I'm at. Where it's like I don't hate the game. It's just yeah, there was nothing good left for me to find it. Yeah, I and like like I love playing it. I love yeah. winning. I love winning too much. I like talking shit the whole time. I'm very toxic. I'm very mean. <laughs> And Austin tells me, like, brother, just, like, like honey. Stay in the lane. Yeah, like, honey, yeah. flies, honey. And I, I don't throw. I don't believe in throwing. It's so stupid that we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't throw. I don't in. I don't run it down. I don't, like, even, like, I don't even tilt. Because, like, I don't, like, tilt and start playing bad. You know, like, my mental stays. Yeah. Like, I stay crystal clear. But, like, talking shit the whole time. Both my everyone's mad at me. My yeah. team, the enemy team. Austin's like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. Um, Matt is way like he refuses to play because he feels the same way, and that it's just yeah. like it's bad for your soul. Yeah. Matt and Corey have been on TFT. I can't believe we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've been on TFT. Matt like refuses to play league because it's like bad for his his brain. Yeah. Like because it yeah. just it brings out a a evil rotten <laughs> animal like a Wendigo. 
like it just summons a demon from us and it i have like made the active decision to not play the game anymore mm. just because like <laughs> like it is like the games are like 40 minutes long yeah, first yeah, of yeah, all yeah, yeah. like and i yeah. can't just like that's 40 minutes of your life you're wasting especially if someone <laughs> takes the game hostage it's so stupid, man. I can't believe it. It has ruined a part of me. It is irreparably damaged a part of my soul that I will never get back. But I'm I'm making the effort to reclaim it. You know I'll what I mean? I'll tell you what. I appreciate you sharing that part of your soul with us today, mister. <laughs> Episode 59. Something for everyone. We have done it. Nathan Calcagno, is there anything you want to let people know about on the way out? So I assume, yeah, we got the tour coming up. We got tickets we can go buy. Where can people find you on social media? What should people know about before they go on with their day? Uh... Boundary CT on everything, Crush Plus Plus on everything, Death is a Little More, Power Pleasure, Forever, uh, tickets for everything on our website, Spite, Body Snatcher, Mouth for War, No Cure, Keonashi, Orthodox, all my friends, all have new music, all brilliant. Cool shit. Either this year, last year, next year, like, music. Everyone's putting out music. They're yes. all brilliant. They're all my friends. I love them. Uh, Europe is going to rule. The headliner, I don't even know how, like... It's looking like it's gonna rule. Yes. So I, I, yeah. I'm hopeful. I really think it's gonna rule. Uh, we have some stuff after that that'll come out when it comes out. Mm -hmm. um, I wish you could plug every single one of my friends. I yes. think that's what I want to do more than anything. But I can't even <laughs> like right now. It's like I can't even think of everybody. The problem is if even if you list 20 names, there's number 21 that's gonna be offended that they weren't included. Oh, I don't even care about offending people because they should know I love them. You know what? <laughs> I, mean? I hate people that do that. Like, oh, yes. you didn't tag me, bro. You didn't tag me in your Facebook post. Like, shut the Eat fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> shut up. Eat my whole I ass. love you. It's just, you can't remember everybody. Hell but yes. I love, yeah. Well, the bitch is better. Remember you. Go tell Nathan he was awesome. Go tell him he did cool today. This was awesome. I appreciate or you making time. Thanks for taking Tear time. me down so I don't get too full of myself. Yeah, do something. Just <laughs> let us know you listened and that you had fun doing it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you so much. I appreciate you.